but why I had two questions but okay. the first one I want to talk to you about was um, how do you cut through the noise on social media when you're seeing um, these accounts coming through that seemingly come up blow up out of nowhere um, and you're constantly comparing yourself to what people are sharing as their best life their best content how do you kind of push that to one side and just keep going in your path so you pick your direction you pick your goals as you've just said you've picked your mission how do you not look at everyone else when it's all right in front of your face okay what happens when you look at all this stuff on social media i'm just curious how do you feel inside when you see an account it can make me feel really good or it can make me feel like trash okay let's go through both emotions there so, let's talk about when it makes you feel really good what, what are you seeing and why do you feel good um, it can make me feel really good because I can say, well, sometimes I know that my content is going further and deeper and more insightful and more valuable than someone else's is. And that gives you the opportunity to say, okay, well, I see where they're potentially going wrong. And as you just said with Sharif, you convert that and turn that into something more valuable. Mm -hmm. But on the opposite spectrum, you look at someone and you go, well, I've just done this thing. In the same way, Aaron was talking about having you in the back of your mind. You're going, well, I've just made this thing. Well, now I feel rubbish. Now I need to go and make something else. But instead of it just making you want to go make something else, it just puts you down. So it just pushes you um, because you're constantly comparing and you're, you've right. increased that level of self-doubt um, and that lack of confidence, which means then you don't make anything. Right. Okay. This is fantastic. I think by nature, human beings are contextual learners. Like when we see something, we don't know if something's small or hot or cold until we touch something that's hotter or colder, right? So that makes a lot of sense. And there's a lot of comparison that goes on. So first I want to say this, and this is a quote, comparison is a thief of joy. So even though it's in our nature to compare, we were happy one day and then all of a sudden we look at somebody else and they have more than us or they're, they, they drive a fancier car and all of a sudden it's like, gosh, my car sucks and my life isn't really that good. And this is one of the downfalls of social media. It makes it very easy for people to compare. And we also need to know something that people live highly curated lives that are not actually a reflection of their true life. So we need to look at the world through that lens, first of all, that people don't show you the crappy work that they do. People don't talk about their struggles, generally speaking. They only show off, I'm at a cool place. Isn't this interesting? Aren't I living a charmed life? And you're thinking to yourself, gosh, I think I have more talent, but then all of a sudden I don't have that and it makes you feel really depressed. So what we need to do is we need to look at all this stuff on social media through a different lens to realize this is the best of their life right now and there's a lot more complexity to it. Like, for example, Anthony Bourdain committed suicide and you think Anthony's on the top of the world. He's a well-regarded chef. He's got a hit show on CNN that's like 10 years in the running. Everybody looks up to him. He's a cool guy. He's got cool tattoos. He's a cool guy, but there's a deeper, darker side to each person and we just don't know that. So understand that, okay? It's highly curated. So in a way, it's not, it's not real. Only some of it's real. But what I would encourage... I think go ahead. I think that's potentially where the biggest downfall, as you say, of social media is mm -hmm. that everything is so curated. And right. when it gets to that level, um, everyone just continues to one-up each other. And when you're one-upping each other, you don't enjoy the process. Oh, that's very you, interesting. Uh, in, from my perspective anyway, right. when you're constantly trying to fight someone else or seemingly somebody else on the internet, which sounds ridiculous, I know, but... <laughs> That's, that's the way it is. You look at influencers for fashion. You look at influencers or people with big accounts um, regarding slime, for instance. Stu like Even the smallest things, there is competition. And you don't see people sharing the process more often than not. All you see is people trying to one-up each other and, as you say, share their best life, which is worse, I think, for my emotional state and potentially other people watching right. as well feel the same way. Right. So now you see, here's the thing is somebody else would be happy with the results that you have. You, you do realize that, right? Because you have a pretty oh, big yeah. following on Instagram and they're like, wow, Connor's only 23 year old and 23 year old and I'm 50 or 40 or 35 or whatever. And then they're looking at their results saying, how is it that this 23 year old kid from uh, where is it you from Southampton? Yeah. Yeah. From Southampton in the in the UK. How is he able to achieve that? 
and then they're going to be miserable about their life. So it's a dangerous game to compare in that way. But I think if we compare in a way to learn, which is what made you happy when you compare something like, oh, that person did that better, or the way that they presented their, their logo sketches was, was cooler than what I had in mind, and I can use that to learn. So I have a very selective filter when I look at the world. That filter only allows things to penetrate, penetrate my brain that allow me to grow. If it makes me feel bad, I just throw it away. I have no time for that, right? So I'll look at people who have a ton of uh, subscribers in their YouTube channel. I'm not looking at like, oh my gosh, they, they achieved that kind of stardom or fame in only a year. And here I am grinding away at it for years and I'm nowhere near them. I look at it like, what are they doing right? Is it their personality? Is it the subject matter? What are they doing? Are they prompting people to comment if they like the video? Are they telling people to hit that subscribe button? What are they doing? And I want to learn from that. So I want to extract from them. I, I've described this before to you guys. I'm like a knowledge vampire. I see something that somebody's doing well and I just want to take it. The cool part is it hurts them none. It costs them nothing and it, it benefits me. So when you look at somebody who's crushing it on social media, who's doing something that's really wonderful, rather than look at it like, I'm not there, why can't I be there? Or this is depressing, I'll never be there. Look at it and try and scrape Scrape something that's valuable to you so that it turns into a learning experience. I think that will be a healthier way to look at things. That's something I learned from you, Chris, is like you got to have like discipline in your mind for your thoughts. Like don't let yourself think those things when you see someone that's better than you or when you start thinking, oh, I suck, whatever. Like just say no, not going to do that and just think about something else and like I feel like that's something yeah. I learned from Chris is that, di that mental discipline to like yeah. don't yeah, think about things. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's actually what I was just about to say. It sounds to me that that experience of going, okay, well, this is actually not going to be helpful to me in any capacity. Let's move on from that. Move on, and move just, on. That is a habit that needs to be instilled in me um, rather than saying, well, this has annoyed me or why am I not here? And then continuing to feed that emotion mm -hmm. rather than just acknowledging it and pushing it aside. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. There's an exercise that you can do, and it's to look for the positive things even in the worst situation. So right now we're looking or we're talking about scanning other internet feeds, right, social media, and saying, "Oh, that's really good." And gosh, I wish I had those kind of skills, or I was that popular, or that much engagement. But let's just imagine something totally different. Let's say something really bad happened to you. It's hard not to feel like the victim. That why did this happen to me? Why am I suffering right now? And to switch your mindset to focus on what did I learn from this experience? Like, I'll tell you a short story. Uh, I've had many reps or sales reps in my life and, and due to an oversight on my part, a certain sales rep took advantage of the situation and then forced me to buy her out of the contract. And I was like, what? The contract's over, we both said it's done, but because I didn't follow it up in writing, she's like, I don't really remember the conversation that way, Chris, and now you're obligated to have me for another year. And I was thinking, this sucks, this totally sucks. And I had to pay tens of thousands of dollars to, to be done with the contract. And I was very bitter about it, and my coach helped me to realize something. He said, Chris, the opportunity cost, the drain on your life right now to obsess over this, and." if you just let this contract go and pay $30,000, whatever amount you needed to pay, you can move on and onboard a new client. And in that new client, how long would it take you to make that money back? And he helped me to gain perspective on this. And this is where people who have more wisdom or life experience can impart upon you to say, like, you know what, it's better off that you just pay this and move on with your life because there's also no point in paying it off and then being miserable about it because then you're still suffering. So he helped me to realize, you know, I gotta move on. This is the cost of a very valuable lesson to always follow up things in writing and have a contract. So I, I, so I said to myself, okay, that was a $30,000 lesson. That's a bitter pill, pill to swallow, but it's one that I need to swallow. Versus saying that person's evil, how could I be so stupid? You go on and on and on, and that's not really productive. So right now you're talking about social media, Use a different lens to look at that, you'll be happier. But even to try to take it to the extreme when bad things happen to you, to take responsibility for it and to learn from it and move on, okay? For sure. Thanks, right. Chris. So stop comparing.
<laughs> <laughs> Definitely.